Praise the Lord. Welcome out. This is our second service on the life and teachings of Paul. Like we said, we're doing a chronological study on his life and his writings. We will be doing um, uh, each letter he wrote in their chronological order. Uh, in, in, in the Bible, you know, understand your Bible has a, what they call the canonical uh, order, which is, and his, here it is just for those who haven't been with us, the canonical order of grouping in the Bible for Paul's writings are length of letter, and, you know, so, so the first letter we have is Romans, and that's the longest letter Paul wrote. Then we have first and second Corinthians, there's the second, third longest, and it's church. And then he, he, we, we started with the other category of personal letters, uh, Tim, Timothy, first and second Timothy, Titus, um, and, and Philemon. And so we had those letters that are written longest to shortest, okay, but we, we're group, group, church group, personal group, longest to shortest, okay. Well, that's canonical order, but that's not... That's not chronological order. Paul wrote letters, and you know, and uh, we we have them chronologically is how we're going to study them. And so we will be going from uh, the the earliest letter to the uh, last letter, okay? And in this study, but we're going to pick them up where we are in his life when he writes them, okay? And so we have uh, letters written on the second missionary journey, letters written. On the third missionary journey, we had the prison epistles, and we had the post-prison epistles, okay? Uh, after his first imprisonment, after, you know, the post-first imprisonment epistles. We do know he went back a second time and was, at that time, uh, martyred for the Lord. And, uh, Lordy, 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 where did that come from? Yeah, hallelujah. Okay, so last week we talked about Saul. <coughs> Again, we, we'll do you good to go back and look at this? We will be putting this uh, PowerPoint out on the Internet it will be changing weekly, folks, because I'm going to add to it. Now that I got the base front end done, as I add to it, do more stuff, I, I'm adding to it, added to it this week, okay? Talk about Paul's early years, his conversion, how he became Paul from Saul. And then we start talking about his missionary journey dates. Uh, the first one between 46, around 46, ending in 50. The second one beginning about a year later uh, of, in the spring of 51, ending around 53 or 54, the winter of 53, 54. The third one begins not long after that, and, and, um, somewhere in a year to a few months after that, in 54, ends in 58, and then he's arrested and taken to Rome in 60, okay? Um, let's go ahead and put up the slide. This, that's the, uh, this is the weird-looking slide in all of them. It's that kind of white paper slide. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have, we have um, if you, it's, it's further down, it's just a white slide, yeah. Okay, okay. There we go. Here, this, this, we've been here, the second, the second one. Now, Paul, after he finished his first missionary journey, uh, finished back up and, and then at, at Antioch, and then a little while after Antioch, he, he, he leaves again on his second missionary journey, like I said, about a year or so after the ending of his first one. Now, uh, on the ending of his first one, um, you know, we, we talked about the different things, how that certain, you know, people were healed or, you know, they, they thought they were gods. But on this one, he goes, they go through Syria and Cilicia, Derby, Lystra, uh, uh, through Pi I, I, Galatia, Troas, Philippi, Thessalonia, uh, Berea, Athens, Gornus, Corneth, Ephesus, Jerusalem, and then they return to Antioch. Uh, it is on this trip they pick up Timothy, okay? They pick up Timothy near Lystra and Derby. We'll get to that. And this all takes place between Acts chapter 15, verse 36, and Acts chapter 18, verse 22. All right? If we'll put up the slide of, of, of the journey, uh, the uh, map. Hallelujah. We see Paul starting out, out uh, here in Antioch and goes through Tarsus, Lystra, Derby, Iconium. Uh, up, up in the region, this, is, this, this area here at this time is Asia. This is Galatia. North of, uh, north of Ephesus, Antioch area up in here is... Uh, is Mysia, M-Y-S-I-A, okay? That's, that's not, not cities, but regions. So this, this area right in here is called Asia. This is Galatia. Um, Mysia is right here on the side of this, this green line. And then we go to Troas, Neapolis, Philippi, uh, and then down over to Thessalonica, Berea, around to Athens, Corneth, over to Ephesus, and back home, then goes down to Jerusalem and shoots up. All righty, so we have that up there. Let's go ahead <coughs> and look at the uh, slide called Second Missions Trip. Okay? And again, this, this will be on, we're going to get this on the internet um, so that you can look at them, download them. You should, you, they will need PowerPoint to look at them when they build. 
You won't. Okay, you can, you can pull up on the internet, on the website, and look at this. Just kind of, you know, if you want to look at the maps, if you want to look at that. And, you know, you can get, you're, usually your Bible will have a map in the back of Paul's Missionary Journeys, and you can get this online. But our organization of everything right here, you can just go pick it up on the website and look at it. Uh, let's talk about some key events um, in, in this passage. We're going to get to the first letter, but it may, it may or may not be this week. I just, there's so much material to cover. You know, that's why I say it could take us a year to do this. Uh, in Acts uh, 15, 39 through Acts 18, 22, and we're going to start reading this in a little while. Uh, Timothy joins Paul near Lystra. They circumcise Timothy because his father is a Greek. And uh, to keep having, from, his mother was Jewish, his father was Greek. And they went ahead and, circus, Paul went ahead and had him circumcised just to uh, forego any problems in the early church. You know, he hadn't even started a church yet. Okay? Uh, and, and after that, they're forbidden by the Holy Ghost, as I said, to go into Asia, which we, we showed you just a moment ago. Then right after that, north of Asia, if you'll k- click back to that, that uh, map slide again, north of Asia is an area referred to as Bithynia. Uh, can you pop back there real quick, Belinda, to the map, first, the first and second missionary journeys? Okay. It's not working real quick, is it? Okay. Right up in here, he says that's Bithynia right there. Paul picked up uh, Timothy right down in here near Derby and Lystra. Uh, right in here, they were, they were following along here, and then Paul was going to go into Bithynia, for Beba. he wanted to go into Asia first, right down in here, the Holy Ghost wouldn't let him, then, then forbid to go into Bithynia, and then right after that's when Paul had the uh, vision to go over into Macedonia, which is on the other side over here near, in this area is, is Macedonia, hallelujah, and, uh, and that's where Lydia and her household were saved, Paul cast the spirit of divination out of the woman, and, and then Paul and Silas, because of that, get beaten and cast in the prison and sing praises at midnight. The prison doors open. They run out. Praise the Lord. Um, and Paul goes to Athens. I can't see that from where I'm standing. Hallelujah. Athens is down here. There it is right there. All right. And, uh, and in Athens, um, I'm sorry, I skipped the whole thing. Thessalon, the Thessalonian church is started. So in Thessalonica up in here somewhere right in there. Okay, then, then Paul leaves and goes down to Athens. Paul and Silas join him later. Paul argues at Mars Hill. Paul ends up at Corinth, remains there six, 18 months, and that is where he writes First and Second Thessalonians. So Paul, uh, after the, the church of Thessalonica got started, the Jews got jealous. I'm telling you, people get jealous all the time. Paul went to Berea and left Berea, went down to Athens and, over in the, and then ended up in Corinth. He spent 18 months in Corinth. And it is during that 18 months he writes First and Second Thessalonians. Okay, and... Um, and then when he set, leaves uh, there after 18 months or so out of Corinth, he sails to Ephesus and Priscilla and Aquila, remember them? Uh, join him on that trip, but he leaves them at Ephesus and sails from there to Caesarea and then travels inland back up to Antioch. That's, that's the circle on this trip. Let's go ahead to Acts chapter 15. We're going to read from here. And then we're going to, while he's at Corinth, read and study the letter to Thessalonica, the, the two letters of Thessalonica. Thessalonica, all right? So Acts chapter 15, verse 39, we start, um, I say, yeah, 15, 39. We can, we can really back up verse 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go visit, now remember this is right, now back up verse 35. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. His first missionary journey, you know, after they made, the, remember the first, uh, hallelujah, let's unblank this. I just turned it off. I hit the wrong button. I need a point of it out. But, uh, when they, when their first missionary journey is this black line, and they did this little circle in here and came right back to Antioch. Remember, in Acts chapter 13, uh, it says, uh, as, as, uh, there were certain prophets and teachers in the church at Antioch, such as Simon, and such as uh, Barnabas, and so on, and Saul, and uh, they went on from there, and said, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I've called them. And so they left Antioch and went on this first little missionary trip, Okay. When they went on the second one, they, they leave from Antioch. And so it says, after some time, here in Acts chapter 15, verse 36, because um, you know, verse 35 says, so they stood there teaching, preaching the word of the Lord with many others. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we've preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. See, Paul wants to go back and recover the first missionary trip. That was what he wanted to do. All right? And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. Remember John Mark? Or we had the, go- the Gospel of Mark. Well, Mark gets over here in, in uh, uh, Pamphylia, and Paul's going on up in here, and Mark leaves and goes back. 
Mark wimped out on him in the middle of the mission trip, okay? Well, uh, Barnabas wants to take Mark with him. And Paul thought it wasn't good to take him with him, verse 38, who departed them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed one asunder, one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. So Barnabas went on into Cyprus, which is their first missionary trip, remember? So he started the circle of where they went the first time. All right? And you got to remember, Barnabas was an elder statement in the church because he's the one that was, had brought Paul over, covered Paul, brought Paul up, and different things. And so he, he probably evidently got the, uh, the first pickings. Everybody thought, well, Barnabas must be right. Okay? And, um, okay? And Paul took Silas, chose Silas, and departed being recommended by the grace of the brethren of God. And he went through Syria to Cilicia, confirming the birth. So Paul leaves, instead of following the original path, comes up, goes up from Antioch and goes into Tarsus and starts that trip there, okay? So that's where we are as far as what he's doing. And he came to Derby. Now, we're not going to keep pointing out every point yet, okay? But I've got to give, give you the basis of where we are. We cool? All right. Um, he came to Derby and Lystra and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. Well, who's Timotheus? Timothy, first or second Timothy, all right? The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish with, and believed, but his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. So this region has a good reputation. Uh, and I don't know, I, I, should, I probably could have done more study and got the mileage between the cities and stuff. But you, you get, this is a very condensed area. Can you see that? Derby, Lystra, Iconium. This is a very condensed area of, of places, maybe 20 miles, 30 miles apart, down and through here. And so the reputation of, of uh, Timothy's family is a good one. Obviously, they're, they're serving the Lord. You know, people's reputations get out there. You know, you'll meet Christians, and, and, and uh, they'll say, well, you'll, you'll say, well, I'm so-and-so. Oh, yeah, I've heard of you. You know, and they'll have heard of you because <clears throat> people talk, okay? Which was well reported of the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews that they were in the quarters, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. <clears throat> so now later, Paul writes back, neither circumcision revealeth anything to the churches at, at uh, Galatia, which is this region just north of there, you know, just, you know, and says circumcision doesn't avail anything and nor uncircumcision, you know, but faith which works by love. Okay? But this is, this is a young church. And so Paul did this just to keep everything appeased. Not that he was saying this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. All right? He was trying to bring, you know, you know he thought, uh, just, just to head off a problem before he gets started, we're just going to go ahead and dip this one in the bud. Yeah. All right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> okay. And as they went through the cities, and we can turn the heat off now, both out in the hallway and in here, both, both places. It's, it, the, the chill has been gone. You know, not the thrill is gone, but the chill is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. And so they went through the cities. They, they delivered them the decrees for to keep. Now, remember the church at Jerusalem had given them things they were to teach the people uh, that were ordained to the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem's. So they went to these different places. They were, going, they, were, they were going to churches that were had been, places where churches had been established. And they were bringing the decrees. What are the decrees? Those are the things that the church is saying you ought to be following after. Okay? These are the things that the apostles and elders in Jerusalem said that you should be teaching. Okay? See, sometimes people just get, <clears throat> get off of these, these areas where they shouldn't be, you know, the church has an authority in your life. And we need to recognize that, okay? Um, that were ordained to the apostles and the elders that were at the church of Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We don't have every last thing they told the people they should do. All right? And so were the churches established in the faith. Notice that by bringing and, and them coming back and giving the decrees uh, uh, and that they've been given to, to take care of, that help establish the churches in the faith and increase in number daily. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia, uh, uh, Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and remember, we, we said this, uh, they're, they're up in this area right in here. This is, this is Phrygia right there. This is Galatia over here. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, you don't have it on this map, but right down here below the word Antioch, this area in here is Asia at this time. Okay? All right. And uh, they were come to Mycenae. That's not on here either. But Mycenae is right up here above Phrygia. It's right in here. This region right here, north of uh, Phrygia, 
South of Phrygia is Asia. North of Phrygia is Mysia, M-Y-S-I-A, okay? And came down to Troas, right there on the coast. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I, I, I skipped right over something. And when they were come to Mysia, or Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, right up there, okay? Right, to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them down. They've been told twice not to go somewhere. They were going to preach the gospel. Paul had places he wanted to go. Just because you want to do it don't mean it's what you're supposed to do. Just because you have a desire to do it doesn't mean that's what God wants you to do. Hello? Here we have two places. Paul was going to go in Asia. Well, I'm going to, my, I'm going to go over here into Bithynia then. Both, both times, Holy Ghost says no. Hello? And you see, everybody thinks, oh, praise God, man, I, can, I need to have visions, and, and God's going to give me visions. I want to wake up and have dreams and visions where I'm supposed to go. He didn't get that until God told him twice not to do something. And he obeyed, the, he obviously obeyed the Holy Ghost by not doing those things. And that's, you know, you've got to obey God, but he tells you not to do stuff too. Amen. Amen. All right. And, and they passed by Mysia and came down to Troas. And a, vi and, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. Now Macedonia, as we said, is right across from... I need a regular to just point. I think this, this thing's not going to work for me. Okay, Macedonia is this region right here across, you remember Troyes is right here on the coast? Right over in here is Macedonia, all right? Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gathering that the, the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now, wait a second. He, he had planned on going into Asia. The Lord said no. He had planned on going into uh, Bithynia. The Lord said no. Has a vision, said go to Macedonia. What happened in Macedonia? He got beaten, thrown in jail. Hello? <laughs> See, and, and you'll have people tell you all the time, if something isn't going the way they think it is, you, that you're, it's a word of faith preacher that you're not having the success that they believe you're supposed to have, you've missed God. Well, then I guess Paul missed God. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, we, we'll have to get to that, that prison thing later. And I'm... Um, they're loose, therefore, loosing from Troas, that's on the coast, they came straight to a Samothracia. Samothracia. Sam, Samothracia. Samothracia. Okay? And next day to Neapolis. Now, obviously, it's not on this map, but right there, near, near, near Neapolis, which is right also kind of down here near the coast, across from Troas, right in there. It must be another small port city that they, they landed in and went over, okay? <clears throat> and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And they were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath they went out of the city by, the, by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made, and sat down and spake with the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of uh, Thyrania, of Thy, Thy, uh, Tyra, Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended and up unto the things which had, were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she uh, besought us, saying, if, the, if, the, if you have judged me faithful to the Lord, come to my house and abide there, and she constrained us. So now Paul has come over to Annapolis, gone up into Philippi, and then here Philippi is where Lydia gets saved. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Now, so she gets saved, and her household gets saved. Okay? Amen? So come into my house, so she gets hurt us, and so her whole household gets saved. Came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, which had a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and, cry, and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. This did she many days. Now, why didn't Paul know by the Holy Ghost that she had that devil? God didn't show him. That's right, she wouldn't say anything bad. She was saying, these men that serve the Most High God, hear ye him, follow them, you know. But that was, it was the wrong spirit in operation. And after a while, Paul, Paul got grieved in his spirit, okay. And, and, um, but Paul, being grieved, turned about and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he, and he came out the same hour. Now, see, the devil will do anything to empower people over people. He'll even tell the truth about people if it's done in that kind. You know, um, 
you, you'll see people and tell uh, the Lord. I mean, I, I see that you you're married with three kids and you got a job working in Wall Street and you make one hundred and sixty five thousand two hundred eighty two dollars and fifty seven cents a year. OK, and so you've got you've got uh, and, and then what happens is and they're going, yeah, that's exactly right. That's what happens is now they have they have established themselves as an authority or one that hears in the realm of the spirit or spiritual things. And people will come to them and they'll make a living off of it. Even by even by telling the truth, but they're telling the truth is still for for a pretense or a false reason or the wrong reason. OK, this woman had a spirit of divination and her masters were making a lot of money off of it. And uh, she and, and Paul being Greece had come out and he came out and said, when, verse 19, when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them to the marketplace of the, and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble. Now, two days later, these men of the, of the Most High God hear them. They're just all for it. But then when they, the devil got cast out, they're ticked off. And now they don't, want anybody, they don't want anybody to hear what they got to say. Okay. Never want anybody to hear what they had to say to begin with. <clears throat> other than to prove that their demon-possessed girl was accurate. And they were going to make money off of that. Okay? And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had made many stripes of them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who receiving such a charge thrust them to the inner prison, made their feet fast in stocks, and at midnight. So here we are. They're in Philippi. Where are they? They're in Philippi. They're up in, the, in, in, in right there. They're up in Philippi. And in that place is where they got thrown in the prison and got beaten, thrown in the prison. And at midnight they prayed and sang praises. Can you say amen? Unto God and the prisoners heard them. Now that, that goes away with that old silent prayer thing. Anybody got an unspoken request? <laughs> it's an oxymoron. You can't have an unspoken request. I've said this before. If you don't believe me, Burger King's right across the street over here when you leave tonight. Drive, go to the drive-thru window and they, and they say, can I help you? You go, I've got an unspoken order and see what you get. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You won't get anything. I mean, they could just ring up nothing and say, is that, is that right, sir? And you may go, no, I want, such, I, want, I want something. Well, what is it? Well, I have an unspoken order. Can't do that. Don't work with God. All right, the prisoners heard them. Hallelujah. And suddenly there was a earth, great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were, oh, see, it was an earthquake. Yeah, you know, I, you know people say, oh, well, that was, just, you know, had an earthquake and they got out. It was, it's, it, people just, you, you, we rely, it's amazing, how, it's amazing how much the world has faith in coincidence to explain away the supernatural. They believe in the coincidence of evolution, the, the, the evolutionary theories. You're talking about having great faith in something that is, it's, that's statistically next to impossible. And they got great faith in it. And all the doors were open, everyone's bands were loose, and the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he would have drew out a sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, we're all here. Well, they're too busy having a Holy Ghost service. I mean, they're in there, you know, Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I mean, they're in there having a shout. Wow! And uh, I don't believe we ought to cure tobacco in the church, but it's hot enough. Th this unit's still running, I think. I'm burning up up here. Okay, all right. Glory, glad I'm not going to hell. <laughs> Amen. And the key, uh, so, uh, but Paul cried with a loud voice, do thyself something no harmful, we're all here. Then he, came for, he called for light, sprang in, came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Boy, I mean just getting the prison doors up and shook him up so much he wouldn't get saved. Yeah. Now, if the prisoners heard them, guess what the prison guard did? He heard them too. Don't you know what I'm talking about? They heard them singing and praising God. And, you know, I'll tell you something. If you're singing and praising God, you're, 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 you'll be sharing the truth of the gospel coming out of your spirit. 
And, and Paul says, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thy, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to, do, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same night, hour of the night, washed the stripes, were baptized, he and all their, he is straightway. Man, I mean, they're in prison with the backs bleeding, singing, praising God. Prison guard comes in there, sees there, he wants to get saved, he gets saved. The whole house gets baptized, and they clean them up. And when he brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in, the God, with all, believing in God with all of his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this, saying to Paul, And the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. But Paul, he could be honorary, said unto them, They have beaten us openly and uncondemned, being Romans. Boy, he pulled the trump card. He pulled the big trump card. You see, a Roman citizen being beat by a non-Roman citizen without just cause could be killed. And they beat Paul and Silas, un, and they, who were uncondemned, being Romans. I'm telling you, they probably, they probably had uh, chills running up down their spine when they heard that word, being Romans. Okay? Hallelujah. And, um, and have cast us into prison, and now they do thrust us out privately? Nay, verily, but let them come to themselves and fetch us. And the sergeant told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought, and, and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. I mean, that's not we're throwing you out. Oh, please, please go. Please don't stay here. Please leave. Oh, we, we beg you, go. Because they heard those words, being Romans. Look at this all in Philippi, okay? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And they went out of the prison. And Paul just wanted, I think he just got honorary. I'll be really honest with you. I think he just got honorary on this occasion and just put the, the fear of the Roman Empire into him. Not the fear of God, just the fear of the Roman Empire because they had beat them. And they knew that if he, if, he, if, he went, if he sent letters to Rome and told them what happened, those guys would have been, they'd have been quartered. They went out of the house, entered into the house of Lydia. And when they were seen of the brethren, they comforted them. And then they departed, or they departed. Now, when they passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. So here's where, here, here's... Uh, they leave, they leave Philippi, and just hit that right there, right there, dip, 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 all right. X that rascal out, that's one of those stupid things, out of memory things. Okay, I can't show you now. All right, when they, they, they came to Thessalonica, and there was a synagogue of the Jews, okay? So they get to Thessalonica. Um, Melinda, can you X those out? Those boxes? Yeah, uh, here we go. The lovely, the lovely box. That's the like is right here. Okay, so they leave. They come across these, these two cities I just read and back up into Thessalonica. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Right there on that little inlet there or that little cove. You got to reboot to clear it. All right. Hallelujah. And they come to Thessalonica. Now, when they get to Thessalonica, uh, there was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went, on, went in unto them, and, and three Sabbath days reason. Now, can y'all figure out what three Sabbath days would be? Three weeks. It's like three Sundays. Or we get Saturdays. Reason with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Okay. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and the chief women, not a few. Now, that, I love the King James, but sometimes I think, why do they just say it that way? The chief women, not a few. A bunch of them. To say it was the chief women, not a few. You know, they got to be all whatever. Thank you, Brits, for your language. All right. Verse 5, but the Jews which believe not, now here we have, we have the Jews that believed, the Greeks that believed, devout Greeks, a great multitude believed, and the chief women, not a few. So we have a bunch of people believing, but the Jews which believed not. 
Okay? Moved with envy, took, them, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. I'm guessing this isn't a compliment about their character. A few lewd fellows of the baser sort. I'm guessing at the time that this was written, that would have been a slam in the face of somebody to be called a lewd fellow of the baser sort. All right? What do y'all think? Okay? And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the city, rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Whom Jason hath received, and they, these are all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. Now, what they did, now Paul didn't say that, but he just said Jesus is the Christ. Okay? They know that the way to get these people upset is what happened, to, to go against the Roman government or whatever, and to say that he said he's king, and therefore um, by saying that, there's another king of Caesar, they could bring the whole Roman army in there and, 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 and be stomped on. And so they, they appeal to a fear area of their life. <clears throat> and... Um, they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Barnabas and Saul by the night unto Berea, which is the next, uh, uh, I think it's the next town over. I can't show it to you right now because we're in reboot. Okay. They leave Thessalonica, the very next town, not that far away, maybe, 10 or 50, maybe 20 miles at most, is Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. They just leave. Paul's not going to stop what he's doing. He's going to do what he's doing when he does what he does. And so they run him out of one town. He goes on and does the exact, exact same thing. He goes to the synagogue and starts preaching Jesus. Okay? So he gets in there. So he gets in the Berea and goes in. The first thing he does is run into the synagogue and start preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. And um, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word all, with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So here we get the, the term the Bereans. More noble than Thessalonica, okay? And it's not like they were a long way away. They're just they're, they're right next to each other. And um, therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. And there's a truckload of men there too. Hallelujah. Amen. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Now, I'm going to tell you, some people just flat out dog, dog, I mean dog, ugly, mean. Hello? And have agendas, and they're agenda-driven. They just, they just want, to put, they want to punish people, and they want to put them down. And, uh, and immediately the brethren sent Paul away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea, but Silas and, Silas and Timotheus are still abode there. So Paul, they ran Paul, they, let, they moved Paul out of Berea, and uh, he, he takes a trip and actually ends up coming around to Athens. Hallelujah, on the, on the southern tip there of Greece. But Paul and Timothy stayed there for a while. And when they, and when they had conducted Paul, they brought him unto, um, uh, unto uh, Athens. And receiving a commandment and the silence of Timothy for so to come to him with all speed, they departed. So after Paul got to Athens, he calls for them. And then they leave Berea and travel down to meet him. Okay? Now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. See, you know, he has his time waiting because he, he sailed by ship. They may, we don't have any evidence that they did, so they may be traveling by foot or caravan down there. And I'm not talking about Dodge. Okay? And he gets, he gets, he gets along, he gets quiet. Sometimes we need to be away from other people and get, get, get along and get quiet. And his spirit got served, stirred, not served, stirred. And we saw the city wholly given to idolatry. He's in Corinth. Now, remember... What two letters did Paul write to the church that dealt with some of the most uh, messed up sin in the church? Corneth. He doesn't write it now. He writes it later. Okay? The, the letter to Paul, the Corneth comes later. Um, and so, it, it, you know, he, but he gets there and he gets stirred up uh, about what he sees there in that city. How it's all given to idolatry and so forth and so on. He gets stirred up about that. He actually writes his first his, his first or his letters, first and second letter to Corinth in the third missionary journey five years later. Okay? 
that he actually writes a letter to the, to the church at Corinth. After he's, uh, here he is, uh, he's, he's stirred up because they're wholly given uh, to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain, now he, just, he disputed with the Jews. See, when you, when, listen, I'm telling you, you're going to share the truth sometime and it's going to have to be a dispute. You're going to have to argue your case. And you have to prove they're wrong. With scripture, not, not in the wrong attitude. Okay? Then certain philosophers of, Epi, uh, of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Uh, and, and other some, he saith, uh, seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto, the Jesus, unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to Areopagus, saying, Areopagus, May we know what this, I just, why can't we just have cities like, you know, Aden and Wendell? All right. May we know what this the new doctrine where thou speakest, uh, speak is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, and we would know therefore what these things mean. For the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Now I'm going to tell you something. We get Christians who just want to hear something new. They want the newest, hottest, latest, greatest. And somebody can come along with something and, and package it and make it all exciting, the newest, hottest, and they just want to be the one on the cutting edge with the newest, hottest, latest, greatest. And they can't even walk in, I'm born again. We have to learn to be a stable and settled uh, in, in the things of God. And, and let me say, there are new, new doctrines. And a lot of times, once in a while, you say a lot of new heresies are just, I mean, a lot of new revelations are just whole old heresies repackaged. Let's stay with the good word of God and stay stable and grow in it. You don't have to have some, you know, I mean, I remember years ago, somebody came out, they were using some Greek word, and everybody's running around, have you done, have you seen this? And they kept quoting that Greek word. They kept saying that Greek word. And, and you know, they, they just made themselves look really smart. I'll tell you something. A lot of times people purport stuff and they haven't taken time to study the Bible enough to get a good grip on it themselves. And they think they got a hold of something. You, you know, and you, you, if you go do that, you, you'll get yourself in trouble. Stay stable and stay steady and grow. Amen. And then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Now this was a, this was a great philosopher place. And said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. For I passed by and beheld your devotions. And, I, and listen, they have, you know, uh, altars or devotion or, or, you know, statues or whatever to all these different gods. And I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Now, these people are like, you know, we, we got the God of this, the God of that, this kind of God, that kind of God, this, blah, 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 blah. But just in case we miss one, we got the unknown God altar. Boy, they're, they're, they really got it going on, don't they? Got one. Got one to the unknown God. Paul said, y'all are just too superstitious. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. God that made the world and in all things therein seeth that, that he is the Lord of heaven. And earth dwelleth not in the temples made with hands. Now he's going to reveal who the unknown God is. Neither is worship with men's hand, hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life, breath, and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined in the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being and certain also of your prophets have said for we are also his offspring for as much then as you are all the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now I said, God, he said here, you know, at the time God winked at your ignorance, but now he's saying repent. Because he's appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Now, folks, I am telling you, people get mad at me when I come along and say, you know, you're supposed to live right, you're supposed to do this. God is going to judge the world in righteousness. Well, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah, but if you've got stuff hanging on you that ain't, it's going to get cooked. Hello? You may not get totally cooked, but you're going to get scorched when it gets cooked.
But he is appointed a time that day when he will judge the word of righteousness by that man whom he ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, well, I tell you, you can be preaching along, people kind of go, yeah, 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 and then you say something, they go. Some mocked, and others said, we'll hear it again, again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed among the which was Dionysus, the Aragapite, or whatever, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. Okay. I'm sorry. He's not at Corinth yet. He's still at Athens. I, I said he's going to Corinth. He's still at Athens. And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. So all this took place. He's, he's at Athens, and he shares all this stuff, preaches at Mars Hills, and then, you know, they, they kind of go, they mock him, and then, some, and then he takes off, and he goes around, the, goes over into Corinth, okay? So he hadn't gotten there yet. While he's in Corinth, he does write the letters to Timothy, I mean to Thessalonians. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And came unto them. And he was of the same craft, and he abode with them and, and wrought. And for their occupation, they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy were come from, now listen. Now he's, you know, remember Paul sends for them. And they finally get down, Silas and Timothy finally get down there. After he gets over to Corinth from Athens. Um, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews. Jesus was the Christ. And when they opposed him, oh, wow. When they opposed themselves and blasphemed, let me stop here. Do you know why I am so dogmatic about walking in the light of the word, doing what the word says, living according to the word? Because when you leave the word and go in your opinions and your philosophies and your thoughts, you are opposing yourself. Amen. You're working against yourself. Well, I don't agree with what you say about this, and I don't agree with what you say about that. Don't oppose yourself. Hello. And, and, and this, let me tell you, just, just don't fall into the young whippersnapper thing. Yeah, you get saved, you know, in some time between three and six and seven years, you run into that thing, you know more than everybody. I got a grip on it all. You think you've got everything, you you, and, and, and you don't. Well, I listen to this preacher, and I got it. Just because you listen to a certain preacher don't mean you got it all. I listened I listen to Dad for 30 years. Don't got it. I, and I still listen to him. And he's been gone now you know, for 10, going on 11 years. And I still don't got it all. Just because you've got, you got five years on your belt and you listen to this certain preacher and you think they know everything, therefore you know everything. You don't know everything. Don't oppose yourself. Don't resist the truth. Don't resist the gospel. Don't resist when, when the pastor says this is, this is something, you know, receive, go look at the Word of God and prove it out. While I'm there, not every single thing that we say uh, is going to be proven out with exact scripture. Now, the, now the big thing now is, you know, I saw an article yesterday. Some pastors written an e-book, you know, should, should Christians smoke pot? Well, the big question is, since it's legal in certain states, what's wrong with it? Well, prostitution is legal in certain states. What's wrong with it? Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about smoking pot. The Bible doesn't say anything about pedophilia. Come on now. There are things that, 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 that you know, the, the Jesus, Jesus didn't say we shouldn't smoke dope. Jesus didn't say you shouldn't be, that you should be, you shouldn't be a pedophile. That don't make it right. That doesn't make it not a sin. It don't make it right. Just because Jesus didn't say thou shalt not be a pedophile. And just because he didn't say don't smoke dope doesn't mean that it's okay to smoke dope. Come on now. Don't oppose yourself. We are to follow after God and try to be more and, and, and to endeavor to be more and more like him and to be holy. And, you know, do you, are you going to bring your bong in there to the worship room with Jesus? Thank you for your enthusiasm. It says that when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go into the Gentiles. So at this point, Paul becomes the preacher to the Gentiles. 
right here on the second missionary journey. Now, this, let me say real quick, he established that church at Thessalonica. Remember, he preached, the Jews, certain Jews believed, the Gentiles, many believed, of the, of, the, of the chief women, not a few. So there's a church established, Paul has established a church in Thessalonica. It's a young church, okay? He gets, that goes down to Athens and then goes around to Corinth. He spends 18 months in Corinth, all right? <coughs> <coughs> He departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Now that's just saying, you know, again, the, English, the, the Brits. And we've got to love them that we're, that's our heritage in, the, in, the, in America as far as our language and a lot of the culture, especially in the northern and eastern half of the country, a lot of the culture came out of Britain. And uh, joined hard to the synagogue. It's, a, it's, you know, it's like saying that next unit over next to the children's ministry is joined hard to the children's ministry. It's an attached house. Okay? Just in case you were wondering when you read that. And Cryphus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians being, uh, hearing believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by the vision, Be not afraid to speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Now, he's been run out of a couple of cities already. Thessalonica, then the Jews came down to Berea. He had to leave Berea. But the Lord's telling him here, don't worry about it. I got you covered. Now, we didn't see Paul and, and Berea going, they can't touch me in Jesus' name. He ran. He ran out there. But then he gets down the corner and the Lord says, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. We got to be led by the Spirit. See, a lot of times we interpret things in a way that is not biblical. And we need to follow, the, we need to follow, you got to be led by the Spirit. Listen, you can't get, you can't go out and say, nothing's ever going to happen to me in Jesus' name, and you go off and do what you want to, and the Spirit of God saying, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then you have a wreck or something, you're going, what did that wreck have? I, t I believed I wouldn't have a wreck. The Holy Ghost told you not to go. It's kind of like the guy, he's in a place and it's flooding. You know, and, uh, and, and as it starts flooding, they come by and cross that street. You need to leave. And um, he, he says, well, no, uh, no, uh, the Lord's going the Lord's going to take care of me. And so the guys drive off with well, the house. It gets a little bit, gets a little bit higher. And uh, it gets to the point he's got to get up on the roof of the house. And the guys come by in a boat. I say, sir, um, well, actually, they can do. They come by and say, sir, how, how people will take it? He says, no, the Lord's going to rescue me. And then he gets up to the pinnacle, of the, uh, near, pretty close to the pinnacle of the house, and they come by in, in, a, in a power boat, said, sir, hop in, we'll, we'll save you. Then the Lord's going to take care of me. And a helicopter comes by as he's standing there with just no, no room, just standing on the, the crest of the house. And the helicopter comes by and drops the ladder down and says, hang on, we'll get you. He says, no, the Lord's going to take care of me. And then he drowns. And uh, he gets to heaven and says, Lord, why didn't you save me? He said, I said, an SUV, a canoe, a boat, and a helicopter by to get you. See, we get, we get these ideas that has to be certain, and we paint pictures in our mind. We can't even see God working in the natural. He has to, it all has to be, you know, he, he needs to be translocated off that roof so he have a testimony. You know what his testimony was? Dummy drowned. Okay. And, um, and so he believed in the Lord, and many of the uh, Corinthians hearing and were baptized. Then spake the Lord in the vision, told him not to worry about anything, I got you covered. He continued there a year and six months, that's 18 months, or a year and a half, teaching the word of God among them. And when, the, and when Galileo um, was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo uh, said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, Reason would that I should hear, bear you, should bear with you. But if it be a question of your words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will not be judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, love these words, glory to God, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat, and Galileo cared for none of these things. And so they got mad with the guy, the Jews, who ran, they just went out and beat him. And Paul, after this, carried yet there, yet a good while. He'd see, the Lord had told him, don't worry about it, I got it. And so he stayed. Okay? Now, 
we can go on down to verse 22, and we're going to read down to verse 22, but then next week when we come back, we're going to cover 1 Thessalonians. Why? Because while he's at Corinth, he writes 1 Thessalonians, okay? Um, and after, the, after Paul had tarried, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then he took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria. And so Paul leaves here from, from uh, up here in Corinth, sails over to, he's in Corinth, and sails over to Ephesus. They call this Syria. But he sails from there to, to Ephesus. And left them there. He took Aquila and Priscilla. Remember, and, and so, I mean, he shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he entered himself into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And when they desired him to tarry a long time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep the feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus, and he landed in Caesarea. And so he sails from Ephesus here and comes back down to Caesarea and goes in and works his way back up inland to Antioch. Um, when he came to Caesarea and gone up and slew the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he spent some time there, he departed and went all over the country. Of Galatia. Now, verse 23 starts his third missionary journey. So 22. Now, while he is at Corneth, Paul has a young church. Okay? We're sitting here at Corneth. Paul is here in Corneth. He started this church up in Thessalonica right up here. Paul down, he's down here in Corneth. He's there 18 months. And while he's there 18 months, <coughs> Paul... Paul writes, and understand, he's got a church of Thessalonica, and next week we're going to pick up on that letter to the church of Thessalonica. But um, the church at Thessalonia is um, it's about 35 miles to Amphilius, uh, 38, 28 miles from Apollonia. Apollonia. It is, um, he didn't minister in either one of those cities. He just passed through them. Okay? He got to, he got to Thessalonica. Um, he ministered there about three weeks, and then, you know, then he went to uh, Berea. Um, and, then he, and then while he's in Corinth, he has this baby church. He's got this baby church sitting here in Thessalonica. He got them saved, ran out, got run out of town, went up to Berea, got run out of town, came down to Athens, did what things happened. Ended up in Corinth for a year and a half, and while he's in Corinth, he writes the church there. He's got this baby church. And he wants, he wants to minister. Now, why did he go back there himself? You know, I mean, he's a, he's a faith man, isn't he? Yeah, but they want to kill him. Well, if you got enough faith, you won't get killed. Really? You, have you noticed that most of the guys who wrote the Bible got killed? You, know, you ever heard of the book, Fox's Book of Martyrs? And it tells how all the different Christians were martyred. You know, we, you know, we get this idea that somehow or another, if you got faith, you know, nothing ever in your life is going to go, wrong, is going to go contrary to how you think it ought to go. Now, I believe in faith. I believe, I believe in, you know, the message of faith, of believing and receiving. But you know what? Um, he didn't go back to, to Thessalonians Thessalonia at that time. They were trying to kill him. And the Lord didn't tell him in Thessalonians, I got your back. He told him in Corinth, I got your back. Don't worry about leaving the city. I got a lot of people here. I got you covered. Okay? So Paul has this young church. And he sends Timothy back to Thessalonia, Thessalonia to check on the church at Thessalonica, okay? Or not Thessalonica. He sends Timothy back to Thessalonica to check on the church. Timothy comes back and brings a report. And in that report, he tells him, you know, certain things. And we, we, as we get into the letter next week, we're going to find out what Paul did, what, you know, what Paul was talking about. He's going to talk about the outline of, of, you know, Paul will talk about, and, you know, and he'll exhort them in different things. But he'll talk about the, some of the things they were, had a problem with. One of the things that they didn't, they were concerned about was people who died before the Lord came back. They were concerned about what happened to people who died before Jesus came back. They thought they weren't sure what happened to them. And Paul deals with that. Remember that? That's one of our main funeral scriptures. Now this I say concerning, the, the, you know, concerning them which are asleep. Okay? And then he goes on and talks about the, you know, the Lord descending with the archangel. Archangel, and will we change the moment twinkling of an eye? And, da, 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 and the dead in Christ shall rise. We won't prevent them which are asleep. The dead in Christ shall rise first. That was all written because they had a question about that. And it was a doctrinal, and they, they, of course, they didn't understand it in the terms of doctrinal question. They, they were concerned that people were dying, and, didn't, and the Lord hadn't come back yet. What happened to them? So Paul writes a letter to this young church. And here we have this young baby church about three to six months after he had left Thessalonica. And, in the, and, and, and after that time he had left there, even with his travels down the coast through Athens and, and then, into, then finally over in the Corinth, somewhere between the time frame of three to six months after that, he writes the first letter to the church at Thessalonica. And then somewhere between two and three months after the first letter, the second letter is written. 
okay? And um, it's not as, you know, it's not as whatever is the first letter. It's kind of a follow-up letter, all right? But the first one's written to this young church, and uh, he talks about things. And I'll, I'll tell you, in, in, in breaking it down, you look at the first three chapters, Paul is talking about, you know, you know just kind of encouraging them, talking about how he, he, he admires them. And, and these are just kind of paraphrase terms. All these different things. He gets into the fourth chapter and tells them, don't fornicate. I just, in other words, if Paul never told us not to do anything. Really? Is that true? I find Paul right in place. Like, I left you commandments, plural. Yeah. Oh, we, the only commandment is to walk in love. Really? Paul left them commandments. He didn't, he didn't say what they all were, but he left them commandments. Yeah. How many of you here are going home? So, um, understand, and, and this, is, this is the thing that we, we just don't get in the church. Your flesh will give you a fit. Your flesh wants to do stuff you shouldn't do. Because your flesh is not regenerated. Now, I don't, I don't, you know, growing up Pentecostal, we, we always talked about, um, you know, we always talk about the old man, and, you know, we kind of get talking about that old man, you know, that, you know, that, the, the other, the other side of me, or that bad side of me, or that, you know, you know you've got, you're a, you're a, you're a triune being, you're a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Your spirit got born again, you're to renew your mind, and you're to keep your body under. Amen. To be successful and to be whole as a Christian. We take scriptures that apply to the position of the human spirit that's been born again, and I try to apply it to unregenerated flesh, and it doesn't work. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It doesn't matter what I do. It does matter what you do with your flesh. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Bible! Hello? When we try to use a righteousness scripture on your flesh, your flesh ain't righteous. Anybody want me to prove that? The Bible says this, that when the Lord comes, this corruption shall put on incorruption. If your flesh was righteous, it wouldn't be corruption. Hello? You'll be changed in the moment and twinkling of an eye. We're going to get a glorified, incorruptible body. Your flesh is corruption. It wants to do wrong. Actually, it's just, just forget saying it wants to do It wants to do carnal. It wants to be carnal. It wants to get high. It wants to drink, get drunk. It wants to get uh, overeat. It wants to sin. It wants to have pleasure. It wants to feel good. And you have to keep that under. You have to, you have to control the dictates and the appetites of your flesh under the constraint of the human spirit that's born again and walking in the desire to please God. In every arena of life. So Paul has this baby church, and he, um, you know, he, he writes to them, and, and we're not, again, we're not going to get this, we're not going to get real far into this. But look at chapter 4, verse 1 of, of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that you, as, that you have received of us, listen to this, that, you, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and please God so you would abound more and more. For, more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Now, you hear some people preach, the next thing out of his mouth should be that we're to walk in love. Isn't that right? The only commandment is love. He says, you know what commandments I left you? Verse 3, for this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. Wow. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And that's all I'm going to say this week about it because I got to get into some more stuff next week. But notice what Paul said. Paul writes and says, I'll let you commandments. And then the next thing he says, you should be sanctified and not fornicate. Yeah. He didn't say anything about, you know, just, just serve the Lord and everything's going to be all right. That is a misnomer. That is not even accurate biblically. 
we, 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 we know this. I grew up in the era, and Bill's talking about this Wednesday, Sunday night. I grew up in the era where righteousness teaching and, and got to, to the degree that it parallels a lot of the new grace teaching today. You're righteous. You can't lose your salvation. You can't become unrighteous. And so because you're righteous, it just doesn't matter about anything else because you're righteous with God. And you're talking about a spiritual position. You are not talking about the, the consequences of living wrong. And there's so much written about how we live. Paul wrote to this church, and, and one of the things, you've got to understand, he's writing to a church in the middle of a, of a decrepit society where sexual sin is rampant. America, America. We're living in, in a society, listen, we're having societal breakdowns. I mean, everything. You know, we don't sell anything on television. I don't think we sell anything on television now without sex. I'm not even sure about them. I mean, just, we, we, you know, there's it's, it's so much emphasis on the, the base, our, our comedies on television. You know, we were watching something, we were watching Gilligan's Island the other night. How many ever, how many ever watched Gilligan's Island? Yeah. How many ever watched the reruns of Gilligan's Island? Yeah. You know, I mean, Skipper! I mean, you know, it was slapstick comedy. It was just kind of, it was the era of slapstick comedy. Now you can't watch television without, I mean, the comedies are not even, they're not even funny, honestly. They're lewd, they're sex-oriented, they're, 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 they're promoting things that are just ungodly all over the place. But there's a lewdness, and everything has to be a, a lewd or a crass uh, statement. It has to be sexual, it has to have an innuendo in it. We can't laugh at Gilligan. Now, I still laugh at Gilligan. I think Gilligan's hilarious. Andy Griffith, Barney. Barney's funny, you know. Hallelujah. But you go back and you look at the old comedies, and it, it, and it was, you know, what we call slapstick or whatever. Now our society has to be crude. It has to be, has to be rude. I was watching, um, I had the TV on last night to see if there were going to be any closes this morning. Because, you know, I got a wife that works at GTCC. Jesse works at the Wesleyan uh, School. Shan's working at GTCC. And Nathan goes to Greensboro College. And so they all had to get to the school somewhere to go to see which schools were closed. And it's on, it on one of the channels, and it's Arsenio Hall show, and they got some guy out there rapping. And they're having to actually do something to his mouth when he's saying certain things, and then he's grabbing his crotch every three seconds. I'm thinking, why? See, it's the society and the era we live in. And this kind of deb debauchery was, the, it was what the kind of world was like. They were there in the, in the Roman Empire in these areas. They were just kind of got decrepit. And so Paul writes back and, and, and says, he didn't say just because you're born again, you're going to get everything right. He said, your sanctification is the will of God. And you should abstain from fornication. So we have Paul writing to a young church, tell, not telling them. See, we, we tell people that if you teach young people this and that, they're going to get sin conscious. Can I, can I define sin consciousness for you? Sin consciousness is not an awareness that something is wrong. Or being told from Scripture that something is wrong. That does not create sin consciousness. Sin consciousness is dwelling on sins that you have repented of and put under the blood, and then you keep living and going, oh, God, I did that. So I did that 15. Oh, I can't do anything because I did this. That's a sin consciousness. Yeah. No, it's under the blood. You're forgiven. It's washed. The word of God says the blood of Jesus will wash, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. But to simply come out and say fornication is sin is not creating a sin conscious in, any, in anybody. Well, if you, pre if you talk about sin, people are going to, you know, be conscious of sin. Your own spirit should be telling you when you're doing wrong. Right. But we got people trying to tell people that don't not listen to their spirit. Yeah. So, as we get into this letter, we're, we're going to start next week. We're going to start out in chapter 1, and we're going to work our way through. We're going to talk about how the first half of this book, Paul, Paul you know, commends them for being, you know, uh, for how they're doing things, to exhort them to stay steady, exhorts them, you know, uh, and tells them that even in one place, you don't even need that I tell you these things because you know they're already doing them. Um, and then in, encourage, ask them to pray for him. I'm sorry. Um, talks about how they could be established, that they increase in love one toward another. And then he comes back at the, at the, at the back end of this and begins to tell them how to walk certain things out and, you know, live your life. 
And we need to teach both sides. We need to teach who you are in Christ, and we need to tell you how to live. And if you have a problem with ministers, now, not calling you a bunch of dog sinners. I'm not, see, I, don't, I don't believe you, okay, you, you sinners are a bunch of dog sinners. You're going to burn in hell. That's not, no, that's not biblical. Amen. But for me to come and say, you know, it, it's wrong. You know, we're not, to, we're not to give in to the flesh. Hello? Well, I want, I, want to, I want to smoke dope. I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, it kills brain cells. Number one, I don't think God wants you doing stuff that kills brain cells. Do you? Irreparable damage to the brain. All right. Um, let's, let's, forget, let's just go on past pot. Let's go ahead and shoot up. If pot's okay, then let's just shoot up. Let's take some. I mean, let's go ahead and get this main line some heroin. Let's have, let's have a. I mean, let's have some hey Jude services. Y'all do know that Jude was an English euphemism or, 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 or meaning for, for heroin. That whole Beatles song was about shooting up. Go listen to the lyrics. Hey Jude. Don't let me down. You'll take a sad song and make it better. It's all about shooting up. Cat, don't receive that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, I mean, listen. Do what now? Yeah, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds dropping the LSD. Acid. The Beatles, the Beatles, it looks, I, I used to like the Beatles pre-drug stuff. I didn't really care for their drug, post-drug stuff. They got weird. They went around in yellow submarines. Found some dead skunks in the middle of the road. And were members of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. Worst thing the Bee Gees ever did was try to do a movie on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. Anyway, we're, we're, so Paul writes to this church, encourages them, admonishes them, exhorts them, and then comes back and says, now here's how, what you're, here's how you're supposed to live. And he does this all the time in his letters. All through his writings, he does this. Book of Galatians is one of the most, I mean, Ephesians is one of the most definitive letters along that line that you'll find, which is in the same Ephesus is right over here, okay? So we, we get that. So next week, we get into, we get into um, first Thessalonians, we get into the letters. Not, but we're actually, we'll get, both, we'll get into them. And maybe we'll be able to cover both of them next, next Wednesday night, okay? First and second Thessalonians. First letter that Paul wrote to the church was to the church at Thessalonica, chronologically, okay? Writes a letter to a young church, has some questions. Paul's excited after he hears from Timothy that they're, they're maintaining their faith. And then he, he lays out some things, tells them how to live. He addresses their question about the dead. And then he comes out with some more things on how you ought to live and closes it. And then he follows that up a couple of months later with another letter. All right, 2 Thessalonians. That's all about 52 A.D. All right, again, about 18 years after Paul got saved, he wrote his first letter that we have record of. All right. He, wasn't, he was not some young whippersnapper. He got saved three weeks ago, and now they're a Bible scholar. Did you know, you know when the Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly, and he talks about not, and talks about not laying hands on a novice? Why? Because novices, you go, do, you go too quick, and you're going to mess them up. They'll get the big head, and they'll run out there. They need, they need to be trained. They need to be established. They need to grow up. And it's, listen, I was the same way when I was young. I thought I knew everything. I had a Fiat Sport 124 Sports Spider. You know, they're only about this wide. British racing green tan interior, five speed. And I carried a Strong's Concordance. I carried an Amplified Bible. And I had this Bible I call the Rumley Bible that was big enough to choke a mule. And that covered my dash. And I walked in the church two weeks after I got saved like this. I got it all. I know it all. My first sermon. I remember right, right before I went to Ramah, they let me preach a sermon. So on a Wednesday night, Pastor Gentry let me preach. And I preached Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Preached everything I knew in 20 minutes. Looked at my watch and thought, my God, it's only 20 after. And started over and preached it again. Took 20 minutes a second time. 
Still only went for, and say, now, now you think, oh, for the days gone by, right? I, I can't even get my opening or closing out in 20 minutes. All right, we're done. Hallelujah. So next Wednesday night, we're going to pick up right here on the first letter to the church at Thessalonica. Hallelujah. Amen.